Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. I have to laugh whenever we do Youth Sunday. Um, you know, there are churches who don't who believe that women should be silent in church. In the Episcopal Church, we put robes and microphones on them and put them up in front. So I always love it when we um, have our Youth Sunday. Um, okay, so that was my little side joke. Um, our gospel today. Ugh. Right? Ugh. Like any, if you didn't go, ugh, talk to me later, because that better have hurt. That better make you go, Ah, uh, like who after hearing this is like, well, um, time for me to send the kids out, get a divorce, and go live in an anchorage somewhere in a desert. Anyone get that feeling? Y'all are like, I could be doing something else with my Sunday morning. I mean, I'm just saying, Starbucks, New York Times, this thick. Do I really need this old gospel thing? So let's talk about the gospel, um, because I think it's important to talk about it. Um, and I think this is another one of those moments where um, I think it's really important for us to realize that Jesus is human. And, okay, remember, Jesus is fully divine, fully what? Right, yes. Um, so Jesus gets us, right? And so um, Jesus has been now doing his thing, you know, and he's healing people. He's doing all of his cool stuff. And all these people are like, that's really cool. That's really cool. So they start following him like little puppy dogs, right? Jesus, do another miracle. Jesus, feed us again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Everyone, anyone ever been in a preschool classroom? <laughs> teacher, teacher, Miss Meg, Miss Meg. I don't teach preschool for a very real reason. I work in a middle school for a very real reason because at least they get sarcasm so that you can be like, y'all back. Ms. Meg can't talk to you right now. Y'all got to go. But right? I mean, you know that. Hey, 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 Jesus, Jesus. Right? This is happening to Jesus. And he's like, y'all, I had enough. Stop. You don't seem to get it. The whole point of this was not y'all following me around like puppy dogs waiting for me to do another miracle and make you another lunch. And so he finally turns to them. And he's like, guys gets really honest and he gets really aggressive in a hopes of shocking them so much that they do a little internal reflection. Anyone else here besides me, maybe it might just be me, I'm sure it's just me, who has ever had to be shocked into internal reflection because who wants to go there? I mean, there's a reason I don't look in mirrors in my house. I mean, because I don't need to know. Did you know, ironically, and I don't know who hung it up, um, when you go into the house, like headed towards my office, there's this huge mirror. And I think I look great when I come home, like when I go home from home to here. I think I look fine. I'm like all put together, got my little collar on, got my boots, because I keep hoping it's fall, but it's not fall, but I keep pretending it is. And then I walk up those stairs, I'm do, 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 and I'm like, I look like that the whole service? And didn't nobody say nothing? And they're like, y'all, you're used to it. It's fine. Okay, so nobody really wants internal reflection, right? You got to be shocked into it. They got to put a big old mirror right in front of you. So this is what Jesus is doing. He's putting in a big old mirror in front of these people. He's shocking them into self-reflection. I think what can be tempting here is to think that discipleship is martyrdom. Right? It's easy to get hooked on that as Christians. That it's all about sacrifice and, you know, self-hatred and self-loathing and beat yourself up and give everything up. But that's not really what he's talking about here. He's saying that discipleship has to be about commitment. And that you have to be willing to commit so much to God that you're willing to go where God calls you to go. That you're not going to be clinging to that stuff that you're stuck with. Right? 
So when he says this, it's a shocking thing. But I want us to also think about the times when you've been, you know, in your little life, doing your little thing, coming along, and it hasn't been great, but it took something really shocking to go, oh, wait, I need to look at that a little bit more, right? Because nobody does that until there's a big old mirror at the top of the stairs when you're headed to your office to go home, right? We need those big old mirrors at the top of the office to be like, you've looked like that all day, Rhodes, right? And so this is what Jesus is doing for them. And I want you to think about that because we all have those things that we cling to so tightly that we cannot give them up, not even for God. And those are the things. Did you know that sin is really whatever comes between you and the divine? That's what the actual meaning of sin is. Sin is not a list of things that other people do that we don't think that they should do. I mean, those are the fun ones. No. But really, sin is really anything that comes between you and the divine. It's a barrier. That's what sin is. And it's different for everybody. It's different for me than it is for you. And some people seem more fun than other people's. But what is sin for one person may not be sin for another person. Like, I personally love scotch. Y'all know that. That's not a state secret. There's a reason. There's a liquor license when you go to do church in the park. Um, but that can't be a sin. If I start loving my scotch so much that it gets in the way of my being connected with God of doing God's work, then it's a sin. Does that make sense? But let's be honest, if it helps me deal with everything, then, you know, maybe it's, it's a gift. Um, thank you, Jesus. Um, okay, does that make sense? Oh, sin is whatever gets in between. For some people, it's Starbucks and the New York Times on a Sunday morning. I'm looking at you all that I ain't here, and you're at the St. Arbucks today. Um, so that's what we have to figure out what that is, because we cling to those things. We cling to them, and that's what gets in the way, and that's when Jesus turns around and says, y'all, you got to figure this out. It's time. So what is that for us? And I'll give you an example. For me, it wasn't scotch. For me, it was full-time ministry. I know, right? And you're like, wait. You, like, gave your entire life to God. And, and that was, for me, what I clung to. So I'll give you a backstory. Some of you were here in this church during this time, and some of you weren't. But um, when I'm not here, when I'm not drinking coffee, and when I'm not doing during the week, I am a middle school school counselor. <laughs> yeah. Think about that for a second. Just let your mind roll through that. Okay. So that's what I do. Um, but that was not my original intent. So at 16, I decided to go into ministry. I went to college. I did my little undergraduate thing. I studied religion and medieval studies. That's useful. <laughs> but it's super fun when I'm drinking scotch, so I'll tell you all sorts of fun things. Okay. But, and so then um, I graduated from my undergraduate. I went straight into graduate school. I got my Master's of Divinity. My whole plan was Okay, I'm going to do the things, I've policies, I got this all figured out, um, got married, did my thing, took my first church, did my thing. Turns out, I know this is going to be shocking to everybody, but there's not a lot of um, money in churches to pay clergy full-time, and we tend to be kind of expensive, you know, when you, like, start adding on, like, pensions and health insurance and all that fun stuff. Um, we're kind of expensive. And churches, again, this is super shocking, but they don't have a lot of money all the time. Right? I know you're like, what? But yeah. I mean, not the Vatican. They do just fine. But we little churches, we struggle. And so here I am. And so that was my first church. Um, I was there. Came to realize, okay, this isn't going to work. Fired myself to half time. Find a new church. Because I have a young baby at the time. And come to my new church, come along, do my little ministry thing, and, well, this isn't going to work, because, you know, I don't, I like to wear the color red, and go Chiefs, it's red, right, 
but I don't like it on paperwork. I really, really asked my investor how I feel about the color red. I'll tell you, she hates red. I was like, this ain't gonna work. Um, and so at this time, I'm stuck with a decision. Do I cling to the life that I've committed my entire life to since I was 16? 16. Do I do the things that I've always done, that I believed I was trained to do, that's what I knew how to do? Do I cling to that? Because that means I've got to do something different. Or do I let some of that go and follow God instead? It wasn't scotch. It was ministry that I was clinging to. And I ask you, what are we clinging to? Because it's really easy to talk about what people are clinging to. It's really easy to follow that list. But for me, full-time ministry was what I was clinging to. And until I was willing to let go of that and open my mind and say, okay, when I pray the Lord's Prayer and I mean thy will be done, do I really mean thy will be done? Like, what if it's different than mine? Because I've lived for 15 years. Let's not think about how long it was. A long time with this plan. And what if that's not God's will? What does that do to my will? What does that do to my family's will? What does that do to my church's will? What does that mean? What does it mean to walk up those steps and look in that mirror and be honest about it? What does it mean to not clamber around following Jesus going, Jesus, when's the next meal? Jesus, when's the next miracle? I want to see something really cool. What does it mean to really say no, not puppy dog, discipleship? What does it really mean to commit to that? Because we all have things that we're clinging to. And I ask us to reflect on that. What is that thing that you are clinging so tightly to? cannot let it go. Even if God says, just relax, relax, I got this. So, I'm going to do a little exercise. I want you to go like this, really, really tight. Squeeze your hands, really, really tight. Cling, 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 cling. Cling, tight, 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 tight. Tight. Let go. And if you're really lucky, I'll sing Let It Go to you. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.